How often do you clinically encounter disorders of the enteric nervous system? Probably more than we realize. There are certain well-described disorders of the enteric neurologic system. For example, achalasia is a neuromuscular um, uh, disorder. There's sort of a collection of muscle fibers at the junction between the esophagus and the stomach that are supposed to keep the stomach closed when the stomach is churning and mixing food with acid to prevent it from splashing back up in a retrograde fashion into the esophagus. And um, sometimes that can be overly lax. That's what leads to people having problems with reflux. But in the case of achalasia, the muscle fibers become so hypertensive that it doesn't allow food or liquid to enter into the stomach. And that's due to the fact that there's a balance between, between stimulatory and inhibitory uh, neurologic pathways in those muscles. And so it's a problem with the inhibitory pathways where those neurons for some reason degenerate and uh, it, it causes those muscles to be hypertensive. So as a result, the esophagus doesn't have any peristalsis, the gastroesophageal junction is too tight, so food doesn't get down, the esophagus dilates because you put food and secretions in it and it has no place to go, it just stretches out. It often presents in, um, as teenagers or young adults with weight loss. They, uh, the food doesn't get into the stomach. Where, where, where does the food go? It, well, oftentimes what happens is it sits in the esophagus for days. There's another important one to, to note in terms of neurologic diseases that involve the GI tract is a disease that's seen in newborns sometimes called Hirschsprung's disease where they are in parts of their colon, the uh, neuroganglia are absent, so the colon doesn't, doesn't contract. And they developed uh, severe constipation, abdominal distension, and they sometimes require surgery to remove that part of the colon. Now, as a practicing gastroenterologist, how much time do you have to spend studying the enteric nervous system? For recertification and, and what have you, you know, there's a small amount that we, uh, that we study but it's not large. You know, we have ways in which we think about disease, which allows us to take care of people, and, and it works very well. Our knowledge is kind of like a sophisticated comic book. We have these theories. We don't really know, but it works. Most of the time, it works. So it's, it's not, if you're not a, um, a scholar in, a, in the field, um, no, you know, when you drill down to these, you know, details, it's not really something you absolutely need um, in, you know, day-to-day -day practice. Well, Dr. Jack Oranger, my buddy, my pal, gastroenterologist, thanks so much for your time. All right, Aaron, good talking to you.